Book a ticket is north of the glaciers. The pupil teaches the teacher, says J.D. Thank you, thank you. You get a lot of these actually wrong, don't you? Well, I mean, I just make it up on the spot, but most of the time you're sitting there confused as because you've never been to the South Island. I've been there once. You've been there once. For three days to Christchurch. Before the tight the earthquakes. What'd you do there? I don't know. The tight five. Five zebra sported topics, roughly a minute or so on each, win the bell, we move on to the next one. Draymond Green has been suspended indefinitely. No, he didn't do a Jama rant. Remember that guy threw his, his sporting career away because he's a dick? Uh, Draymond was yesterday backhanded a player and got ejected for what, the fifth time this year, was it? Fourth time this year already? I think it's about the third. They've but only what, played... So it's ridiculous, he's been suspended. Yeah. They've only played about 15 games yeah. and not only that... He got to, the last time he got suspended, which was only a couple of weeks ago, it was before a point was scored in the game, wasn't it? He got ejected. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Champions League, that. 16 teams are through. We'll talk about that. Eddie Jones, mate. We all knew this was happening, but I'm going to replay you that audio where he's just denying it. Tom Deason, who's appeared on this program a few times this year. Good on you, Tom. Because in these circumstances, bloody hard when a journalist breaks a story like that, gets Eddie Jones in your face, and you know that Tom Deason would have just worn it from Rugby Australia, Hamish McLennan, the chairman, and everyone else. You know, say they would have called him all kinds of names, tried to discredit the guy. He was exactly right. Uh, Big Ben Rothelsberger says the Steelers' tradition might be done. He has been caustic in his comments about coach Mike Tomlin, who was his Super Bowl winning coach overnight, Lachlan. Uh, Kawaja, we don't really have to talk about that, do we? Uh, the Halbert, he did? He's going for a little piddle. Oh, did he just piddle? Oh, he just no. did piddle. Okay, right, no, all right. Hold on, I'll get it. You, what do you mean you get it? What are you going to do? How do you mean Put you some get... paper towels on it, oh, okay, This is your first time looking after a puppy. Okay, put your paper towels on it, all right. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, we worked in this building and the roof leaked for the first year or 18 months, didn't it? The roof collapsed on lock. Remember, we had to fly down to Wellington and work out of there and there's black mould everywhere, so a little bit of piss on the carpets. Not going to hurt too much, is it? Don't do the other one, Prez. Please don't do the other one. Uh, the All Blacks, how do you assess the year? That's another topic as well. Kick it off, though, Lachlan, with Champions League, Champions League, Champions League. And 16 teams are now through to the round of 16. Let me go through these again. Germany 3, Spain 4, Italy 3. So they take up 10 of the 16. England take up a couple. So the main four leagues dominate again. Bayern, Munich, Copenhagen, Arsenal, PSV, Madrid, Napoli, Real Sociedad, which is a Spanish team, if you didn't know, Inter, uh, who got runners-up last year, uh, or this year rather, against Man City, Atletico, another Spanish team, Lazio, Dortmund, PSG, Man City, Leipzig, Barcelona and Porto. Talking to Andy Buckley there, do you agree? You're really only looking at Man City, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, and then a surprise package might be the other semi-finalists. But I think the winner comes out of those three. Any um, argument? Did you say Man City, Barcelona or Bayern Munich? Oh, sorry, Man City, Bayern Munich, Madrid. I don't think Barca are the four set they once were. So No, they're still rebuilding towards that. And they're still quite a young team. Uh, yeah, Real Madrid... Um Man City, definitely. PSG have lost... Um, they're not sort of the same they've been over the last couple of years, and even then they couldn't even win the uh, Champions League. Dortmund uh, were pretty good in their group stage, but again, Dortmund are one of these teams that uh, builds up really good players, uh, really young, talented players, buys them, builds them, or gets them out of their academy, and then sells them off, and then kind of does the same thing. So they're never really a heavyweight. Arsenal are in the mix. I think Arsenal absolutely are in the mix. Um, yeah, the thing that's going to cost them, though, mate, is playing... Every three or four days during that period, if they go on a Champions well, League, well, City run. as well. Yeah, but City, you've got three squads. Remember, okay? well, to be fair, I heard what Andy Buckley said there. I did a little bit of research, um, and if you just look at sort of your your main five to ten guys outside of your match day best seventeen for Man City, uh, the next five to ten guys aren't anywhere near as good as what they had last year and the year before. Um, so, at least in my opinion. So I don't think City actually have as good a squad. I'm not. I'm not trying to steal Andy Buckley's take there that their squad isn't as good over the last couple now as it has been over the last couple of years. But I, I don't think it is. So I, I could absolutely see them slipping up in either that or the league. I think. What would they rather win the Champions League? Or the, probably the Premier League. I'd say they would because that, that would be four in a row. They'd have created another yeah. record. Yeah. yeah. All right. So hard to go back to back in the Champions League. And the only team that has done that since it became the Champions Real. League. 
Real Madrid. They won it three times in a row. There you go. Eddie Jones, mate. I love this. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking I about, mate. mate. No, I've had no discussion with him, mate. I've never had a job offer from Japan, mate. There's no offer. You're reading your own time frame, mate. You have to ask Sydney Morning Herald. They seem to know more than me. Okay, well, they do, Eddie, because they broke the story. What do you think about this and his denials? Um, <clears throat> I mean, does it make you like him less? I like Eddie Jones because I, on this side of the microphone, people, you know, rugby is the dullest sport there is doing this job when it comes to actually getting anyone with a personality or who will speak or who will make a comment or who will give you some decent audio or create a headline or a storyline. So Eddie Jones is a godsend in that. That's why we will gravitate towards Razor Robertson because he's a, a point of difference, isn't he? Yeah, I mean... I've always liked Eddie Jones, and I still do. I, um, I, 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 I got... Oh, no. Oh, no, he's not... What is he, he's, what? he's ripping up the paper that was soaking okay, up well, the piss. Okay, you keep talking, I'll get Okay, up. you do that. <laughs> yeah, that's not nice. Um, no, so, um, what am I saying? I'm talking about Eddie Jones. No, Eddie Jones, um, I... Look... I like him, I like his character, I like his um, his antics, and I think he's a really good coach and he's a very abrasive coach. Don't put it on my desk, for goodness sake. Oh, it smells, mate. <laughs> well, it's piddle, mate, what do you think? Well, it's, I don't know. Is that HRable? Yes. Peter, we'll ask you at lunch I think tomorrow. we're getting to a point where bringing the dog in is HRable. Yeah, it is. Even though I do love dogs and I like priests. Um, anyway, uh, but look, the thing, like, the problem I had with Eddie Jones with this whole thing is, look, there's clearly a story going on. There's clearly something happening, and someone's picked up on it for them to be reporting it. And he flat out denied it. And I guess it's kind of hard to do something in that situation. For starters, you shouldn't be de- conducting interviews for it a be job. Double dealing, mate. With um, when you've got a job with Rugby Australia, you, you should be waiting till after you had the World Cup. You a girlfriend, and you're, and, you're, and you're on Instagram with somebody else. Um, but the he, he he likes to really he he denies it, and then goes at the journalists. Yep. He has a go at them yep. and, and questions their credibility. And it's a bit of a shame when journalists are doing their job and doing it well. And now he won't care. But now it really doesn't look good for Eddie Jones at all. He just looks like a nasty person who. Um, had a go at people when the story came out and tried to deny it, but he couldn't, and yeah, it's just not a good one. No, and I think it means that this Japanese job is his last in world rugby. How about that, though, uh, from Jim Tucker? Yeah, probably. He's created a world record this year as the only man who has coached three international teams in one year. Well, within, okay, in the space of 12 months, yeah, yes. Within because he was sacked from the England job around this time last year. I only want to just mention this quickly about Big Ben Roethlisberger, who I don't like, and the reason I don't like him is is because of the uh, the cover-up story about the attacks on young women and so forth, mm. right? Um, or And you can Google that on the internet. He's a Steelers, Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback. Um, but he says, who's setting the tone for the team? Referring to this losing Steelers side at the moment, um, there is no one fighting for the badge. The shirt means nothing. Um, what he's saying essentially is what Paul Scholes says for Manchester United. And it's fascinating to me because he said this younger group of players in this generation, he said, it doesn't mean anything. He said, when I joined the Steelers, the Steel Curtain, those Super Bowls, that's what you looked at every day when you came in and you aspired to do. He said, this young group of players, they don't care about any of that stuff. It means nothing to them, the tradition and things. And I'm drawing the parallel there. And I'm just wondering, Lachlan, if we've maybe seen the last generation of players you know, your Steven Gerrards, your Paul Scholes, all of these guys who actually join a club and it actually does mean something to them. Um, and, you know, in 10 years' time, the Saudi money's going to dominate most sports. So thank crikey it won't dominate United States sports. I mean, they, as bizarre as it is in the most over-commercialised market in the world and everything else, and with all the falsehood that's around it, the billionaire owners, they're the only shining bright light left in world sport because the Saudi money is not going to buy an NFL team. They just won't let them do it. They won't let them do it. It won't buy a Major League Baseball team. They won't let them no, do it. No, they won't. Uh, in terms of the Steelers, look, I'm just looking back over their season. So right now they are 7-6. and six. So they're above 500. The Steelers have a run of many, many, many years where they have finished 500 or better. You that's him with these, that, yeah, that's him with these chicken. Um, and I'm, you've got to go back to 2003. is the last year they lost more games than they won. So that's... 20 seasons, yeah, assuming that, this year they that, finished look, above, finished above 500. To the Patriots, mate. That's when he made the comments. Yeah, so, um, look. Oh, so that was uh, over a week ago now. Then. 
It was, yeah, it was on the week. It was, it, it, what, it was, the, la- it was the Friday game last week. Yeah. Last week, okay, mm-hmm. um, so, my, the, sorry. So, sorry, I'm struggling to get around it because of the squeaking sounds in the background. But um, the point is, I get what he's saying, but, it, like, relax. It's, it's one average year... That's followed on yeah, from 20 really good stop years. You guys won two Super Bowls exactly. in the yeah. 2000s. Yeah, Mike Tomlin yeah. won a Super Bowl as a coach. Exactly. He's going through a period yeah. of transition with the roster. Wait till you guys have had four or five yeah, losing seasons there, there in a row. All right, right that's that's when you've got to do it. The Hellbergs, you explain to me how the women's New Zealand rugby sevens side, which won nothing all year, gets a Hellberg nomination. Well, they powered their way to a uh, bronze medal, though, didn't they? According to staff, yeah, powered their way to the bronze medal... How, how do you get a nomination for a National New Zealand Sporting Award when you haven't won anything? I have no idea. It's I mean, you could say it's about the All Blacks, to be fair, but... Um, well, no, I mate, think well, on no, hold on, mate, we did. 2022-23 World Rugby Sevens. We did win it. Did we? Yeah. We won the what? Hold up. Just look at the men's series. We did win No, it. the men. I'm talking about the women. The women apparently won it as well. Did they? 2022-23 World Rugby Women's 7 Series. Oh, yeah. God. All right. Well, in that case, okay. Who the whole knew? argument is moot. The whole argument is moot. All right. Congratulations to you, Black Fern 7s. You deserve the Hellberg. There you go. Well, I suppose no, uh, this, look, I was trying to find this out. I, didn't, I, I, I spent half an hour today going through the internet trying to find out. Aussie won the Rugby World Cup 7s, the Commonwealth Games last year, the 7 Series. So we won the 7 Circuit this year, did we? Well, who would bloody know? Yeah, I don't think we had. See, this I mean, is, a new, we're, we're in the midst of okay, a new season. My bad. All right, my bad. In that case, because, what, did it finish early? This, see, this is what Sevens has become, hasn't it? Yeah, we don't know. It's become a whole who cares. It's just a big financial hole that World Rugby just pour money into. But it's No not- one goes to these tournaments. No one cares about these tournaments. No one talks about these tournaments. But, hey, I'm sorry. I take it back. You deserve a Hellberg nomination if you won that title. Well, I'll say this. You, you do in a sense, but I don't think you do at the same time because look at how many people and teams get nominated. There's like 20 nominations for each category. Think, Let's pull it back to four or five. It used to be four or five. I think when you go through the list, and I'm not going to read it all out, but when you go through the list, this is absolutely reflective of where New Zealand at, at, is at the moment. Yeah. You, basically, that they don't want to tell them. I'm amazed that the football ferns didn't get a nomination. <laughs> okay? Because they won a match this year and scored a goal. Yeah. I mean, that's how farcical it is. A couple quick to go. Uh, the All Blacks. How do you assess the year? Because we're going to talk about this big time before 3 o'clock. How do you assess this year? Given the fact, as I started the programme by saying, we're not the best team in the world and haven't been for five years. We have lost 14 matches in the last five years and drawn two. Mm. 14. I don't even think Steve Hansen dropped 14 matches in his tenure, did he? No, probably not. And Ted probably didn't either. Um. I mean, you know, and don't just peg this all on Fozzie. The same players, ladies and gentlemen... But I thought it was Fozzie's fault. ...had played all of those matches, right? And yet yet we were a point away from being world champions, in which case they would win the Hellberg Award, they would have had street parades and we'd all be lauding them because we'd once again be able to call ourselves the best team on the planet. That's how fickle it is. And the key players were the ones that we would regard as our best and they're all gone. All gone. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, I, th- well, I don't want to say it's a transition period, but it is in a way because you've got a new coach coming in who's... Um, it's this the, the appointment of is a diversion away from... Diversion? 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 Away from um, the sort of uh, jobs for the boys thing that was going on uh, where you had Ted, you had Shag, and then you had Fozzie, this succession plan of that coaching tree. So that's done now. Um and we've also got players in key positions that we need to look at um, replacing, or slash key players being um, first five, where Richard Morong is gone, halfback Aaron Smith's gone, loose forward area where two guys are gone, actually, Artie Savir and Shadow Frizzell. We don't know who our locking duo is. Uh, is it Tupu Vai and Scott Barrett? Well, I'm happy about Scott Barrett. I'm not exactly that excited about Tupu Vai, not to be rude. Um, and then uh, we've lost probably one of our most exciting outside backs who I think should be sticking around, but it's a real shame he's gone, at least to Whanganuku. Now, he didn't really start for the All Blacks, but he was at least an option. So there's a lot of holes to be filled by a coach who has a great resume at Super Rugby level, but we know that that is a far cry in itself from Test level. So how excited do we really get about Razor's record in Super Rugby? Um, I don't know. I don't, I, it's, it's, I, 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 there's almost a wipe the slate clean, rub out all the whiteboard marker on the whiteboard and just um, start from scratch. And the one thing I really want Razor to do, 
He won't do it. The one thing I'd love for him to do is to bring in probably your 30 to 40 best players who th- would be in a wider All Black squad if you were to pick one right now for next year. Bring them all into a room and show them an empty whiteboard and go, that's my team for next year. There you go. And they'll be like, what? We're like, mm. Yeah, there's no yeah. one on there. No one. Whoever's the best in Super Rugby, there you go. You're in my All Blacks. You are in my All Blacks. The scrum, though, critical, the platform for the All Blacks. Can they get the platform right? Devlin. You've got to love sport. The platform.